Latin American designers. And there's always this conversation about uh, how Mexican I am, or how Mexican my reflex is, and the things like things like this. And and somehow it's a, it's a it's a great exercise, and it's being away from from my own country and going back backwards and forwards. I think that uh, that uh, that aspect of coming back and seeing things that you wouldn't see if you live there uh, uh, tremendously influences your 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 creativity and, and your source of inspiration for, for what you design. One interesting challenge for the V&A now as a global museum is to set up V&As around the world. Um, and that could be in Scotland, it could be in Rio, it could be in China, it could be in Johannesburg. And I think, well Lagos, absolutely. I think the question for us Glenn, is what does that look like? And what does a v &A in Rio mean and look like to the good people of that city? Yeah, I think um, there's a lot of uh, instructive examples on this, aren't there? Because the Guggenheim first famously, Gobao, and now the Louvre and Abu Dhabi and other museums have tried this. They've tried to export themselves as a brand. And typically what they've done is to set themselves down rather like a flying saucer, trying not to crush the city below and obviously bring prosperity in some way. I think it's very much what to go about. It did work at Bobao, and of course we talked about the Bobao effect, which has been very hard to recapture. I think for us, at least I would hope going forward, that any time that we extend the VNA brand to another part of the world, that is a completely bilateral proposition. So that if we were to create, let's say, VNA Rio, VNA Brasilia, that would be in Mexico City. We would be doing that. Thank you. We would be doing that because we want to learn more about Brazil. We want to learn more about Mexico. We want to learn more about Latin America. So it would be more like a door opening up than it would be a product that we're sending out into that space. And that would be our motivation for doing it. I think we'll do VNA by the sea. So Mexico yeah. City is not on. So <laughs> just, just, to, uh, to, just to warn you about that. We want to go out in a hallway. And I, I, by the way, I like this approach. Uh, well, I think, uh, I, uh, I think what, what I, for, for me, the v &A has a very simple aim, which is to inspire creativity. So what, wherever the v &A is, it has to do that job for, for its visitors. So they need to come and look and be inspired to create. Um, Glenn, have we ever successfully done a national design exhibition? What do, what do you think? Well, without casting aspersions on China Design now, really, because I, I think that show had a lot to recommend it. And it also not incidentally added a lot of objects to our collection that in 100 years would be seen as very interesting. I think the only really successful example of that is very telling because it was our British design show from last year uh, held for the Olympic season. And it was a classic example of doing what you know. And I think that there was something about that exhibition which was rather like Danny Boyle's opening ceremonies. It kind of captured something about the British identity that only British people could have done frankly. And it was very much from the heart and from the gut. It wasn't, honestly, it wasn't terribly analytical. It was sort of a bit of this story, a bit of that story. A lot of people that came through the exhibition had that, oh, I had that when I was a kid reaction. And I think this is one reason why we felt that in embarking upon an exhibition about Brazilian design, that it was very important to have a Brazilian point of view, not ours. I do, actually, I was thinking about this today. Now, I, I think that the best national design show we've done is David Bowie. Because I, I can't imagine an exhibition which says more about Britishness than the David Bowie exhibition. And it seems to me that um, people have come to that show for its authenticity. Uh, Bowie said that in Britain you can be who you want to be. We can all be creative. And I just wonder whether that might be, whether through performance or fashion might be a better way in to this question about uh, a regional style. Have you, have you seen Bowie? No, but okay. we managed to book, I think, four months in advance, and we're, 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 we're finally going to go into yeah. that. Yeah. But I, I just, for me, that just said a lot about Britishness, which British design didn't manage to, to I think say. You just put your finger on something else very important, which is that when we say design, often people think we mean chairs and plates. But in the V&A, design is this all-encompassing field of fashion. Fashion and how you design yourself is really key. It's Marco, right? 
sitting before us in his, in his beauty. And I, I think that there's, there's something about design as something that's performed, something that's lived, something that's experienced in every aspect of what you do. Not just good design, mind you, also bad design. You know, so this is a moral and immersive subject. It's not just a professional one. It's not just a technical one. It has those aspects, obviously, we know a lot about them. We know a lot about how these things are made. Uh, we know a lot about how films are made, in fact, now, because of Hollywood Costume, another very successful show uh, last autumn. But ultimately, it's about the impact of design on our lives and the fact that everybody, in some ways, is a designer. And precisely because of the range of authorship that you get in Latin American design, the fact that everybody that you meet is designing their environment in some sense in many parts of Latin America. It's a perfect subject for well, us. I think one thing that's missing is, is fashion. Because I think that fashion exhibitions are incredibly popular. And they're not, they're not just about people looking at dresses and going, wow. What I hope they're about is people saying, well, why does it look like that? And it's, I, I, for me, fashion's a wonderful way into looking at um, possible national style. I don't know what you think about that. I, I was very, very, um, I, I only started uh, appreciating the world of fashion until recently when we saw an exhibition of the Wallace Collection of Vivian Westwood. Really? Was it? Sorry. <laughs> Apologies for that. So, uh, but there was something that they, they mentioned, they mentioned uh, uh, where, where her work came from, and I became very, very, very it's interested. Inspired by the Viennese nice collection. That's, that's what's yes, important yes, about it. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, and somehow, yeah, the world of fashion, in, in how ephemeral it is, in how fast it moves, uh, I think opens a, a, an incredible channel of expression for designers. You know, it's so interesting yeah. because the speed of fashion is rather like surrealism, actually, which is another great Latin American success story. Where was surrealism best? Not in Paris, but in Mexico, right? That's where you find the best surrealism that was ever made. And there's something about the speed of fashion that is very telling because it, it's not so considered that... But people are doing it every day to themselves. Yeah, that's, that's exactly. It. So the truth comes out. And people often will come to us from other museums, from our museums, and they'll say, oh, V&A, so we have these fashion shows. Don't you feel a bit superficial? And we, we always say the same thing, which is, we're doing something much more profound than fine art when we take out fashion. Because it's the way that... close upon. Absolutely. It's the way that you actually think about yourself. Much more so than, no offense to Pinto, because obviously painting is very important, but it's much more telling what you wear on your body than what you hang on your wall. And that's what we're looking at. So we'll, we'll want to see a Pinto fashion element in the future. Yes. So listen, here we are at Pinto. This is the last question. Um, and which presents a view of Latin American art and design, so it says. Um, which I, and I think it does, actually. And I wonder what, what would you both take away from Pinto in 2013, Marco? Well, I, I only came here the first time was last year. And, um, and I, I, I felt a, a quite a contrasting experience in, in what you see uh, this year. I felt uh, uh, there's, there's a focus on this uh, simplicity, uh, this kind of, uh, as we've mentioned before, this you know, finding what, what's around you and using that as a resource very economically. There's a lot of, I, I, I find it incredibly like, engaging, very clear to understand. Uh, um, and uh, yeah, congratulations to, to, to curators and organizers. It's a, it's a fantastic show this year. Yeah. I think uh, for me, it's further confirmation of what we do already, which is we all live on the same planet at the same moment. And I think it's a very interesting exercise to walk through Pinta, asking yourself the question, if nobody had told you this was a Latin American art exhibition, would you have noticed? Right? And I, asked, just, I asked myself that question. Yeah, yeah. Because there are some things that jump out to you, you know, candy-colored clear plastic on your table, and you think, oh god, it's so Latin American, or some kind of Baroque painting, very colorful, or these kind of gambara, you know, um, DIY <coughs> objects. But it's an incredibly varied presentation. And frankly, those Latin American stereotypes or motifs or styles are also available to people in the rest of the world to exploit. And so you can have an artist in India or Lagos using something that looks classically Latin American, Kripalami and Motifs, who knows what. And I think it's that availability and flexibility without the sense of an identity being lost that you see here, which is very inspiring. 
we're going to actually um, I'll have a few questions, but thank you both very much for answering those, I think, difficult questions. It's not, a, it's not an easy subject, actually. Um, but I think you, thank you for your eloquence and for your um, imagination in answering the questions I put to you.